Welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video on compartment syndrome. To understand what happens in compartment syndrome, we have to first understand the fascia that surrounds the different compartments of a limb. So if we look at this cross section here, so there's bone. If I, for example, cut my lower leg, uh, at the cross section, and I look at it from that perspective, I would have my tibia, my fibula as the bones in there. But I also have muscle tissue as well as blood vessels and nerves. And all these structures are surrounded by fascia. And what the fascia, um, it surrounds these compartments. And when there's compartment syndrome, that means there is increased pressure to any of these structures because of edema or hemorrhage, whatever the, the cause might be. And we'll look at those later. And then because there is this increased pressure, the fascia gets compressed. So it puts pressure on the muscle, on the nerves, on the blood vessels, as well as the bones, because there's only so much space available. And when it becomes compressed, when it compresses the blood vessels that feed these different compartments, they become ischemic because now we have decreased blood flow. That leads to hypoxia, Whenever hypoxia occurs, the, the body sends extra inflammatory markers there to try and help resolve this and increases the capillary permeability. Then we have increased fluid there and now in an already um, compressed space now, increased fluid means increased pressure and we are back here in this vicious cycle. So then again, we have hem uh, edema, compression of the fascia, ischemia. So it kind of gets worse and worse and worse as the pressure builds. So there is no real good way out. So risk factors to developing compartment syndrome are fractures, any kind of fracture, mostly of the long bones. But think about it, when a bone gets fractured, there is some severe bleeding and edema that occurs and that puts pressure on these compartments. So bad hematomas and contusions, so not even fractures, but just like a really bad crush injury, let's say to the thigh or to an arm can cause some bleeding and a contusion and the, the bleeding causes pressure on these different compartments. Casts and splints, if we apply those and we don't account for the swelling that might occur after the injury, the splint and the cast can act as a constraining factor so the, the tissue can't expand as it would usually when it swells up and so then it causes compression of these compartments. Burn injury certainly because of the, um, the factor of the tissue injury also causing edema and pressure. DVT usually causes edema. It can, it can get so severe that there is now this edema causing um, pressure on these compartments. And then heavy exercise, so if you keep using your muscles over and over, you pound your muscles, they will get inflamed, they will get swollen, they will become edematous, and they can lead to compartment syndrome. So early signs and symptoms include pain and then maybe normal or decreased peripheral pulses because if we have pressure on these blood vessels, then the blood going through, well, the blood flow going through will be diminished and we can, it can be evident in the distal part of the body by diminished pulses. If we don't catch this early, the patient later will get cyanotic because there's no blood flow coming through. There will be paresthesia, so numbness and tingling because the nerves get compressed. There will be weakness or paralysis because now the muscle has impaired movement and impaired blood flow. Absent peripheral pulses, so now no, no blood flow is coming through because the blood vessels here are so compressed that we're not perfusing the distal part of the extremity. And then certainly severe pain because now we're talking about ischemia and hypoxia and we always know that that causes pain. As for, di for treatment, a fasciotomy is the only way to treat it. And what that means is that the muscle, the, the extremity has to be cut open to relieve that pressure, let that edema, let that fluid, that blood come out and relieve that pressure on these compartments so the circulation and the nervous system can work again. Diagnostic tests are x-ray CT scans to look at the different compartments and the severity or whatever the underlying cause is. And then we can measure the compartment pressure. There's a certain tool that the orthopedists carry with them 
and the surgeons and they can actually put that inside the muscle tissue and it'll give them the reading of the compartment pressure and then depending on how high that reading is they'll determine if the patient needs a fasciotomy or if we maybe uh, can wait and, and see uh, maybe with elevation ice and those things. Um, and then the other thing too for treatment, fasciotomy not only, but think about it if it is because of a cast or a splint, we just need to remove that external factor, that cast or that splint, so that extremity can, can swell and these compartments are relieved of the pressure. Nursing care, the five P's of the neuromuscular assessment, because think about it, what gets compressed here are blood vessels, nerves, and muscle. So we already said that the patient might have decreased blood flow, so cyanotic, absent or um, diminished peripheral pulses. They might have paresthesia by pressure of these um, nerves, and then they might be paralyzed because the muscle now can't move their, their ischemic. So the five P's check for pain, pallor, paralysis, paresthesia, and pulse. So make sure that you review my physical assessment video if you're having trouble with these five P's. And of course, we always want to check vital signs, identify patients at risk. And what I didn't mention here is if this is a patient after a fasciotomy, we want to do meticulous wound care and um, dressing changes as order to make sure that that fascia that is many times left open for weeks of, at a time doesn't get infected because that can po pose a whole other problem list here. So thank you for watching this video on compartment syndrome. As always, the most important thing is staying on top of your patient, especially if they come back from surgery, which is also why we check their distal um, five Ps so frequently in the post-op period, sometimes every 15 minutes for a couple hours and every 30 minutes, depending on whatever the mechanism of injury was to make sure that we detect the signs and symptoms early rather than later and the patient might have a bad outcome. So thanks for watching. Please give me the thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching Nursing School Explained. See you soon.